Good evening. It is truly an honor to be here with you at the White House and to be with so many inspiring young adults. Many of you have taken an active role in speaking up and speaking out, not just for yourselves, but for those who will follow you. Seven years ago, I worked at the West End Neighborhood House as a case manager for youth aging out of foster care. I was able to see firsthand the challenges faced by young adults in the foster care system and the resilience and unbreakable spirit. I want to give a special welcome to a mentor of mine, Paul Calistro, who is the executive director of the West End Neighborhood House. Paul is the West the West End Neighborhood House is a nonprofit in Wilmington, Delaware, and Paul has dedicated his life to supporting youth aging out of foster care. I also want to welcome the entire Delaware delegation. Tanya, Tanya Cauley, who heads the Office of the Child Advocate, Felicia Kelliam from the Division of Family Services, Maggie Boone and Nicole Byers, both inspiring young leaders in Delaware who have experienced care, and Julie Miller, who runs the Delaware Youth Opportunities Initiative at the Delaware Center for Justice. It is an honor to work with so many passionate and dedicated individuals. As the executive director of the Delaware Center for Justice, it has been my privilege to work with young people who persevere through challenging situations. We launched the Delaware Youth Opportunities Initiative to help children who age out of foster care handle the next steps in life. One of the most important aspects of the Youth Leadership Board, which gives a seat at the table to young people who are affected most by the decisions that are made at every level of government. We are also building networks of resources so children can reach out to people they know and they trust. You are all doing so many wonderful things, and I can't wait to see what you do with your lives, both for yourselves and for others. You are truly some of the most courageous and brave young men and women. So I want to thank you all for being here, and I want to thank everybody involved in the making of this wonderful movie. And now it's my honor to introduce a man who feels the importance of this issue in his bones, a man who has taught me about empathy, courage, and advocacy, my father, the Vice President Joe Biden. Jamie, my dad used to have an expression, and it was for real. He'd say, you can determine as a, father or as a father or mother how successful you are if you're able to turn and look at your child and realize they turned out better than you. <laughs> I'm a hell of a success. Thank you, Ashley. I'm Ashley's dad, and uh, I'm proud to be here, and I want to welcome you all to the White House, especially all the great young people who are here tonight. Uh, who are here with us from all around the country. I got to meet some of you, and uh, you have a, you're a remarkable group of young people, chosen by adults who've watched you uh, learning and growing in school and, uh, and in your neighborhoods. And they, uh, they see a spark in you guys. They see something special. They see the same spark that's taking you from some very, very tough times and helped you get through some challenges that uh, that no kid uh, should have to go through, but so many, so many do. And I know from personal experience, as most people in here know, that uh, life uh, can change in an instant. All of it can change. And when life throws challenges your way and things happen that are unfair or even unspeakable, uh, things that no kid should have to deal with alone, it's hard to stay focused on achieving your goals and even having dreams sometimes. And it's hard to believe in yourself. It's hard to believe in yourself when it feels like nobody out there cares. But you look around this room, there's a lot of adults in here and a lot of you are young adults now, care, care a lot. And uh, Ashley cares, the president cares, uh, my friend Congressman Jim McDermott cares, and uh, 
Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, in order to make sure you have the best chance to achieve all the amazing things that you're capable of, um, there's things we know we can do. And uh, we have to do a better job looking out for you and making sure those opportunities are available. And all the kids that come behind you. And like I said, you're not kids. Some of you are young adults now. Some of you are in your 20s. And uh, while we're uh, taking some positive steps today, uh, there's a whole lot more that we need to do. Uh, we have a shared responsibility, everyone in this room, everyone in government, state, federal government, local governments, nonprofit organizations like my daughters, and so many more. And in, in our outfit here in the administration, no one knows that better than our Secretary of Agriculture, who has a story of his own that is compelling and has driven him in many ways. A remarkable guy who I hope you all get to meet and, and hear from. And, uh, and, you know, I want to particularly uh, mention a woman who's not here today. And I say this for the, uh, for the organizational folks in the room, uh, Senator Mary Landrieu. Mary Landrieu, back in the days when I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee and then Foreign Relations Committee, dealing with issues relating to foster care and adoption and international adoption, uh, there's no one that I met in my entire career is more passionate, as Jim knows, than Mary and more committed to improving uh, the circumstances for children in foster care and uh, children uh, uh, who are adopted and find themselves sometimes not always in the best circumstance. And uh, as uh, so, I just, I know she's not here, but uh, I just want to recognize Mary. You know, uh, um, it's all about making sure that you all are able to be independent, confident, successful, have uh, a sense of hope and expectation. Um, you know, and equally important is our responsibility to help uh, not those of you who are here, because in many senses, you've already made it. You've already demonstrated you have the, that special thing that takes people through really difficult times. One of the questions I have and a request I have is to those who've gone through foster care um, is we need your help. We need your help now. And I'm not being solicitous. I really mean it. We need your help. We need you to be able to give hope to so many tens of thousands of kids who are still caught and left in the system behind you, behind you. You know, you'll find that the greatest satisfaction you can have in life is when, uh, when you're able to reach back, when you're able to find someone who's going through what you've been through and be able to just by your mere presence you got through it, demonstrate that it's possible. Remember. Remember the times when, and there were times, when some of you just sort of had no hope. You wonder, is this ever going to end? Is it going to work for me? Is there a way out? There was probably somebody, somebody somewhere along the way, who said, no, no, you can't. You can't. I did it. I did it. And that's why you're the most important people in this room. The, uh, a lot of you are serving on youth advisory boards. Uh, like the one Ashley runs in Delaware, and they're all over the nation. Thank God for some of the people in this room because they're doing it in every state and every community. And uh, the interesting thing is there's no expert like someone who, uh, who, someone bright and caring who's lived it, who's felt the ups and downs, who, uh, who's uh, uh, been in uh, seeing the good and the bad of the kind of care that exists out there. You've experienced it, you know, and we need you to stay involved to help us, to help us uh, make it better for all those kids coming behind you. And I ran, you're not kids now, you're, you're, you're adults or young adults. And if, if we do it well, the experience for thousands of children who are going to be in the system are going to be coming through the system, we can make it better if we do it well and in many cases, uh, much better than what some of you had to go through. No one can speak to what has to be done, what improvements are needed, better than those of you who've been through the system. You are the experts. I really mean it. You are the experts. You've felt it. You've absorbed it. You know it. And uh, I know uh, what I find most remarkable is 
that some of you uh, who were hurt by the system, some of you had scars from the system, that you're willing to stay in the game, man. You're willing to stay engaged. You are, uh, you're willing to reach back. Look at those who are coming behind you. That's the thing that I think makes you the most remarkable. People that I know, and the older folks, and no one in this room is as old as me, except Jim approaching me, um, but my experience, and it's significant these days, unfortunately, um, is that uh, uh, I know uh, that everyone has gone through a really tough experience, uh, hard knocks, real tragedy. Uh, usually that experience does one of two things. It makes you stronger or it makes you weaker. It makes you stronger, it makes you weaker. You hardly ever stay the same. Hardly ever stay the same. And as a person who's had a couple hard knocks, like a lot of you, not like yours in particular, I've observed uh, that my mom was right when she used to say, Joey, uh, out of everything terrible, something good we talked about this time something good will come if you look hard enough my wife and daughter were killed in an automobile accident right after i got elected to the senate i was a 29 year old kid and um and uh my two boys ashley's brothers were uh, in that accident and uh, they weren't expected to make it they both turned out to be fine and and healthy young men um but uh i remember my mom who i love more than life uh, saying to me, you know, Joey, you know, just look hard. You have to make something of this. They're part of you, but make something of this. And I thought, what a cruel thing to say. But it's true. It's absolutely true. And I think you internalized it much better than I did in my experience, because you all are here. I didn't have the courage to stay engaged that way. I wanted to just get, get away. Forget it. But you've been through it. Not all of us have been tragic, but you've been through some pretty tough times. And you're staying engaged. You found that you can make it better. Something good can come out of your experience for so many people. You know, uh, um, one of the most famous poets in modern time in the United States was a friend of mine, and I think yours too, Jim, Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou just passed away. And I think probably the cast, most of them probably met Maya somewhere along the way. And uh, she, uh, she went through a really tough, tough time. Uh, she grew up in a lot of different homes. She even lived in a car in a junkyard for a while um, when she was a teenager. She turned out to be an incredibly remarkable woman. But what she did was uh, she was able to turn the melodies of her life into poetry that was able to ring in so many thousands of people's ears. She grew up to become, become an incredible woman. And she always liked to say, and I quote her, when I looked like the sun, when it looked like the sun wasn't going to shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the clouds. And I'm confident you guys that are here today You've seen the rainbow. It's not all been realized yet, but you've seen the rainbow. You know there's one there. And I'm counting on you to help those kids who may not be as strong or as resilient, or as, resilient as you have been. Kids who, if you remember, who are scared right now. I bet you can picture in your mind so many kids you knew that are left behind who are still in foster care, who are just simply scared just simply scared. And when you're scared, it's hard to find a rainbow. You've got to help them. We're all going to try to help, but you've got to try to help them. Your example, you've got to point out to them, you've got to show them that there is a rainbow, a rainbow for them, as well as the one you've just caught a glimpse of and are beginning to reach for. And no one can do it better than you. Now, I hope you all enjoy the movie. I understand it's a great movie, and I thought I was going to get to see it, but the president set up the congressional ball tonight. And uh, I've got to, Ashley and I have to go and uh, put on a, 
Ashley looks beautiful in a gown. I don't look so hot in a tux, but we got to go and, and go to this. And I don't mean have to go. We're delighted to go, but it conflicts. <laughs> I didn't mean it to sound that way. Although I have to admit, I'd rather watch the movie. I, uh, <laughs> um, but I hope you enjoy the movie, and I hope that people, after seeing the movie, walk away internalizing that very point. Uh, you don't have to be Will Stacks to help provide a wonderful young person with a better life. It's helpful if you can be a Will Stacks, but you don't have to be. You can open doors of opportunity. You can help these kids see the rainbow. And, and uh, it's funny that uh, um, when I was really lucky, no man deserves one great love, let alone two. And 37 years ago, I met Jill, uh, my wife, after my first wife had been gone for five years. And we got, we didn't want to get married in Delaware. We wanted to get married in Delaware. We couldn't figure out how to do it without inviting the whole state, Cameron. We didn't know how to do it. Everybody, because the state was so wonderful and, and rallied behind me when the accident occurred. I had more Yentas in every community. I had Yentas in the black community, the Irish community, the Polish community. I had everybody, Joey, I got such a girl for you. Um, and, uh, but thanks to my youngest brother, he set me up on a blind date and I'm forever indebted to him. And. Uh, so we uh, went up to uh, and got our marriage license in the Bronx. And it was, hey, Bidden, you're next up. So no one knew who I was. It didn't matter. <laughs> and the press was wondering, who am I dating? What am I doing? And, and, a, and a Catholic priest, a Jesuit who was a street priest, worked the streets. Uh, um, uh, a friend of my sister's married us in the UN chapel. And afterwards, our collective families, Jill is one of five sisters, and I have a big family, and we all had a, a wedding lunch, and then we went on our one-day honeymoon, Jill and my, our two sons and I, in New York, and we went to see Annie, the play Annie. And so just the notion of being invited here brings back nothing but, uh, but great memories. And, uh, and uh, 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 Covenzina, you're, uh, you've, I'm told you've done an incredible job as Annie, and you know, to have, uh, Staff, uh, I have a, um, uh, a cast like uh, Cameron and uh, and Jamie. Uh, you give a whole new life, I'm told, to a, to a, to a great story, uh, told in a way that's different. And what a gift you guys have! No, I really mean it. You know, your art allows uh, allows us, in the words of Richard Calmer, to transcend or transcend ordinary lives, and let us imagine what is possible. That's what you guys do. What an incredible gift. Not just in this movie, but what an incredible gift you have, the power of your art. But it's within all of our power, everybody in here, to make it possible, to make it possible for so many children who are gonna go through the system or in the system to have a better life. And it seems to me that uh, that's a really worthwhile thing for us all to be doing. So for everybody in here engaged in, uh, in the production of this, of this movie, for all the young people who've been through it and can taste what is being talked about uh, and willing to continue to help, and for all those who you, of you involved in government and in, and in private philanthropies as well as uh, nonprofits, uh, thank you. Um, if my mother were here, she'd look at you all out and she'd say, you're doing God's work. Thank you all so very, very much. We're delighted to be here.